Explore today's must-have trends and innovative styles at Mrs. B's Clearance and Outlet. Shop one-of-a-kind finds in today's must-have trends. Explore wall-to-wall deals, furniture, flooring, mattresses, home accents, seasonal favorites, and more. Discover unique new home decor, pillows, accessories, and more. There's something perfect for your style and budget. There's new inventory every day at up to 80% off suggested retail. Discover the style and savings of Mrs. B's Clearance and Outlet. You can live out your MasterChef dream when you find a professional on Angie to tackle your dream kitchen remodel. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Visit Angie.com. You can do this when you Angie that. Ah, motherhood. One minute, your mom of the year. I love you, mommy. Then the next? <laughs> mm, not so much. From bath time to bullying, from potty training to puberty, Parenting is full of challenges, but one thing is for certain, you are not alone. Welcome to Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, author, mother, parenting expert, Tara Clark. Join me while we tackle today's Modern Mom Problems. Hey, 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 welcome back to another episode of Modern Mom Probs. I am your trusted host, Tara Clark. Today on Modern Mom Probs and always on Modern Mom Probs, We try to solve the world's modern mom problems, but if we can't, hey, at least we're having fun talking about them, and today is a fun conversation. I'm welcoming Julie Cole to the show. We're talking about sippy cups, stickers, and startups, building a business while building a family. Julie Cole is a recovered lawyer, mother of six, and co-founders of Mabel's Labels. She is an award-winning entrepreneur, best-selling author, and a much-sought-after speaker and MC. Julie, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited that you are here. <laughs> uh, I actually know, true story, Earlier today, just right before this, I was on an, I recorded another podcast and we were talking about uh, career pauses. And we were also talking about how people don't take female started companies seriously. And I used you as an example. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Because yeah. uh, we're going to talk about all this. But before first, yeah. I, before that, I want to introduce you. You are an author, a speaker, a mother of six children, and the co-founder of Mabel's Labels. Julie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, uh, well, that's pretty much it. That sums it up. <laughs> All right. Look, thanks it's been, for coming. Uh, yeah, 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 it's been fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so 21 years ago, started Mabel's Labels with three other women. We noticed a product missing from the marketplace. We were looking for a little, maybe to drop out of the traditional workforce to have a little bit more flexibility to deal with all these kiddos, but also love working. Um, and so Mabel's Labels just made so much sense. So we got together and we said, let's Let's do this. And we created our very first product, which was a dishwasher microwave safe label. So that was for the bottles and the sippy cups and the wipes containers and the lunch boxes. But now, of course, we've expanded to, I mean, it's been 21 years. So we have like all kinds of clothing labels that some that don't require ironing. We've got shoe labels, bag tags, allergy alerts, um, household labels, you name it. We've got it all, baby. You got it all. <laughs> I have some right here. Yeah. Ta-da! There they are. Yay! They're awesome. And yeah. then, yes, like through, like, you know, through all of that and through ra- raising all these children, of course, you know, t- 20 years ago, 18 years ago, something ridiculous, I started blogging. Um, so I've kind of been in this space for a, a really long time as an entrepreneur and as a mom. And did you find when you started, and I know this is true because you mentioned it in your book, Like a Mother, that many times when women start a project, people are like, oh, how's that little blog working out? How's your little sticker project going? Right. And that's the thing. I do think when people see entrepreneurs who are moms and and do that shift because of the role. And, you know, the, the, the term mompreneur is a little bit controversial. For me, it actually feels a little bit relatable because this this company started as a direct result of my being a mother. And the thing is, though, 
often people will look at sort of the mom entrepreneur segment or the mom bloggers or mom influencers as hobbyists. But hobbyists, we are not. We are serious business people. I never made a label out of a hobby. You know, like this is something that we took very seriously from our very first meeting, the four of us, us four moms in the basement. You know, we kept minutes. We had a business plan. We did all those things. So it is a little bit um, funny when they we are considered, um, you know, hobbyists when we're actually legit money making business women. Yeah, it really gets my goat. And uh, honestly, you know, it does. It does. And and, and you mentioned it in your book. And so that's why I wanted to address it. And even in my conversation this morning on the podcast, I said the same thing. I said, literally, I said, Julie Cole created a multi-million dollar business, an international business. And people were like, oh yeah, how's that little side project that's going? Cute. Oh, that's cute. I remember, I remember somebody saying to me, it was actually one of my cousins and it was like maybe a couple of years in and she's like, so do you sell to anyone other than like relatives? And I was like, oh girl. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember the funniest, I was at um, a hockey camp with my kids and my daughter Posey was maybe like four or five at the time. And all the, um, all the hockey equipment was outside and it was drying out. And, and she could see that there were Mabel's labels on all this ice hockey equipment. And she said, oh, mommy, that's so nice that you give all your labels to these people. I'm like, give them. <laughs> <laughs> no, they paid good Girl. American money for that. Canadian How do you think I'm that? paying for your hockey camp? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Uh, but you have to teach her young. That's right. Yeah. But you're you're right. Like as far as the impressions, and sometimes people have this idea when really, I mean, women are an economical force and uh and we are starting businesses at three times the rate of men. Um, so and especially through COVID, we saw that increase even more. So women are uh, taking their side hustles and they're making them full-time hustles and doing a great job of it. Yeah. And and so I want to talk about, I mean, you have six children. So it's true. It's, the rumors are true. The, <laughs> the things that you've heard are true. How did your yeah. family adapt as you were spending a lot of time in the creation of this new business? Yeah. Look, I feel like a big piece of entrepreneurship is, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, Tara, where like, you need to manage your family's expectations, right? So people romanticize entrepreneurship. They think, oh, great, you're going to start a business. So you're going to be doing like TED Talks and speaking engagements and writing books. And yes, okay, right, fine. But I've been in line for 20 years for that stuff. But, you know, in those early days, it was making labels in a basement till 2 a.m., getting up pregnant with my fourth at 6 a.m., you know, doing the kid thing, doing business plans during, I always say like, you know, business plans during play dates and changing diapers and changing the world. You're doing all of the things. So I just think if anyone is thinking about this, this world of entrepreneurship and, and starting a business, you have to really understand what it looks like. And it looks a lot like being in a basement until 2 a.m. It's not putting the kids to bed and pouring a glass of wine and throwing on Netflix for a couple of hours while you unwind. There's no unwinding. That just doesn't happen. And there's no money being made for the first while. So you might do without that holiday. You might not have that second car or whatever, or do that renovation whatever might be your priority, you might have to shift that. So along with managing your own expectations and to your point and to your question is managing your family's expectations. So what is it going to actually look like for them? And yes, of course, as the business grew and, you know, I even, I, I did maintain quite a bit of flexibility, but not as much at certain points points, you know, ebbs and flows, feast and famine, you know how that goes. And um, I think just making sure that they understood and, and me setting boundaries in, in all of the places and communicating those. I remember um, now, of course, when we started 21 years ago, there was no social media and there were no iPhones. So um, I remember with, with cell phones coming out, it was like, this actually gives me a lot of freedom. But I was very careful about with my kids because if I was going to watch them do a sport, I said, hey, if you look up at me, I got to do two things. I got to do one phone call and I got to reply to one email. And then I would stick to it because I didn't want to go to their game and have them look up every time they got a goal or whatever. And I'm staring at my phone. So I stuck to those boundaries, but I also did communicate to them. And I did tell them, hey, without this thing, I wouldn't even be at the game. So let's keep that in mind too, right? So this phone, I will manage it. 
but it does give me the flexibility to actually come to your game. Otherwise, I'd be sitting in office in an office. So I think you know, when it comes down to honestly, Tara, is all about the communication and managing expectations as things change and your business grows. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that you set the boundaries with them and the communication with them about the phone. Because there are times where I have to say to my son, oh, I have to just finish this one thing. And I mean that, I really do. Yep. Like I do have to finish this one thing and then he has my undivided attention. But it is so important for me to communicate that to him so that he doesn't feel bad or think that I'm ignoring him when I'm really right. not. I genuinely am trying to finish something before we can play together. That's right. And, and I think, and, and the thing too then is to stick to it, right? Like if I say I'm only going to take one email or one phone call, then I, I got to do that because then they're going to lose trust. And, yeah. you know, so you, not only managing the expectations and communicating it, but actually sticking by it. Yeah. Yeah. And then what about when it comes to delegation? Like you have six kids, like you can't be six oh, places yeah. at one time. Like at what point did you say like, I need help here? Yeah. So there's a few little tips and tricks I really had along the way. Um, I can't be in six places at once. Remarkably, I am building a cloning machine in my basement. When I'm done, I'll pass it along to you. <laughs> we can start hiring it out. Um, but I did little things like um, every child was allowed to do a sport and an instrument. So they weren't allowed to do everything they wanted. You know, we had to put some limitations in there and that's okay. And actually COVID taught me that we were probably doing too much anyway. The other thing I would do as long, uh, um, as well as, you know, setting those kinds of boundaries is I would make kids, luckily I've got a bunch close in age. So I would put them on the same team. I would have a kid play up um, in hockey. So two of them would be on the same ice hockey team and that sort that's of thing. So that's clever. Just, I, I know I was the queen of carpool. If I ever turned up at a birthday party and there was another parent in the neighborhood who was there as well, I was, I would be like that was a fail. So I would, you know, I started a neighborhood mom's Facebook group so that, you know, I'd be like, Hey, has anyone got a kid doing dance here on these days? Yes, I do. Great. Let's do the carpool, carpool queen. So I did, um, I, I wasn't afraid to put that out there and ask for help. And I, I got a nanny. I joke in the book about it. I got a nanny when my fifth kid turned one and that was three kids too late. But I think I just got <laughs> sucked into that. I have to do all the things, which is dumb. It's just dumb because you actually don't. Um, so yeah, I think putting boundaries, not being afraid to ask for help and, and saying no, like just saying no. And and for the kids, um, you know, I am a big natural consequence person. If they do forget their lunch, I'm not going to bring it to school. They're not going to starve for one day because I don't want to spend my life chasing around six kids for forgotten items. If they, you know, if they forget their gym clothes, so they sit on the bench one day, they'll never do it again. Right. And yeah. they have to respect that. I have a lot to get done. I have to raise them. I have to make the labels. I have to do my community stuff. I've got lots to do. You know, I have an extended family. I have a mom, you know, people, I, there's a, you know, you're pulled in a lot of directions as you well know. So everybody's got to kind of respect that. And I think the way to get them to respect that is to respect yourself. Love it. Love it. Preach. I would be giving you a standing ovation right now if I was standing, but I'm not. So it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting up, Julie. <laughs> no, <'cause, laughs> then I'll have to rearrange my microphone. Oh, it's a whole too thing. Hard. No, I'm just kidding. No, but you deserve a standing ovation for that because that, that is absolutely true. Did you find that the kids were good good about helping each other when they needed to, if you weren't necessarily immediately there to help out? Yeah. Look, I mean, people have these ideas that big families are like the Dugers where older ones are raising the younger ones. And it's not like that really, but they do, um, of course, care about each other. And because of that, they will help each other out. I, I do remember, and this is kind of a funny story, but I do remember once being in my sister's basement where we made the labels. It was the second basement, so it was a little bigger and there's a bathroom down there. And the four-year-old and two-year-old came out of the bathroom and was like, hey, what was going on in there? And Posey was like, well, you know, I had to wipe a bottom because I don't know who else was going to do it. And I was like, oh, thank you. So like, she took care of the little sibling, managed the bathroom when I was busy doing something. So they do like, they did always take care. And, and of course that one also, that's her personality a bit too. So you get the different personalities in there. I do find interestingly now as they get older, like, cause I've got a lot of teenagers and, um, they kind of self-regulate. Like I don't have any teens that like that slam doors or eye roll or nobody's sworn at me. And I think as if anybody starts being a little bit disrespectful, the others would be like, whoa, 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 easy there. You know, whoa, Nelly. So they kind of self-regulate. It's a, a thing I didn't know would happen, but it's quite delightful really because I don't ever, 
yeah, like I never have to discipline anyone. I've never grounded anyone. I've never taken somebody's phone away. Like I've just never had to do any of those things because A, they're not, they're just not goofy. They, you know, and, and also I just don't think, I mean, why would, I don't understand grounding anyway. Wait, they're going to stay home all the time. Who wants that? No. Get out of my house. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Nobody wants that. But you know what? Yeah. Though? I think it's so important. I have an 11 year old son and I yep. think it's so important to lay the groundwork with them early when they are young so that by the time that they get to be 15, 16, 17, that you don't have those eye rolls. You know what? Exactly. Yeah. You do the work, right? All of that work goes early so that you have an easier time later. And I feel like a lot of people aren't talking about that, but I feel like we do need to talk about that. It is, you know, I really do think, you know, those early years are so important. You are laying so much groundwork. But having said that, I know great parents who have really goofy teens who are making their lives not great. So, you know, who knows? I, I do think laying the groundwork early is very helpful. And, you know, that whole, you know, I don't have to raise my voice because they don't want to just, they don't, they don't want me to be disappointed in them. They do want me to be proud of them. They don't want to, you know, there is all of that. And it's just because, you know, they're race good humans. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the moral of the story. Yeah. Hashtag. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so funny. Create the outdoor oasis you've dreamed of with help from NFM. Whether you're wanting a tranquil backyard retreat or a lively outdoor party space, find something you love from our huge selection with hundreds of new items arriving every day. Patio sets start at just $139. Shop the latest trends in backyard essentials, from rugs and pillows to flower pots and fountains. Long-term financing is available on qualifying purchases. Unwind and discover the joy of backyard living. Big selection, big savings. NFM. Angie's List is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco-move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is, and it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. But like, going back now to the business, I have a couple of questions. One, do the kids yeah. ever help out? And then, so let me ask, I'll ask that question first. Do the kids yeah. ever help out? So this has been like a part of their lifestyle. So yes, when they were little, like it would be like, okay, everybody gather around the table. We all need to put bag tag hoops in, in little plastic bags or something. Or they would come to the office with me. And like when they were little run around or once they got... They could do little jobs, putting chains and baggies, like I said, and that sort of thing. Um, as they've gotten older, we do a lot of summer hires. We hire a lot of students. So they've been in the mix with a bunch of, you know, I think we hire like 50 people in the summer kind of thing. So they, we do hire a lot of students. So a lot of their friends end up getting jobs at Mabel's Labels as well. A lot of my friends' kids, um, anyone who's, you know, in the neighborhood and looking for a, a job for their teenager, I'm your girl. Um, and, and you're and in Hamilton, right? Are yeah. Are you still in Hamilton? Right, right. So we've got two production facilities, actually. One is in Hamilton, Ontario, just outside of Toronto, and one is in uh, California. So we've got we've got a couple of going. Um, but yes, I'm the one in, in Hamilton. So that's... Uh, but it's funny, you know, with the kids, them being involved, and also, you know, they've been involved in the stuff I do. Like, you know, they've been on a lot of TV, and they've been in a lot of photos and stuff like and stuff like that too so they've been a part of sort of that public eye as well and that's where I'm sure you can relate to Tara as they get older you want to be like kind of respectful of their boundaries and I definitely am very big on consent but I will tell you too there are times where you know I had one we had to get a photo for magazine or something and one kid was like I don't feel like it I was like you don't feel like it eh they're like I don't feel like it I'm like how do you feel about getting to go to the cottage? How do you feel about the fact that we went to Disney? How do you feel about that? And they're like, oh yeah, I like that stuff. I'm like, then go to the get in the picture. <laughs> like, I, I, it goes both ways. Like, I do believe in consent and I do respect the boundaries, but sometimes, you know, this is my work. This is my J-O-B and they, I need their support. They need my support. We got to work together. So there's a balance and I feel like I found it. I don't think I'll be paying for too much feature therapy. Not for that anyway. 
<laughs> other things, possibly. Maybe other things, but we'll cross That's that right. bridge when we come to That's it. That's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what are some tips that you've learned as an entrepreneur and a mother of six when it comes to productivity and time management? Yeah. So yeah, a a lot, lot. And you know, that first one really was around saying no. Um, And I feel like I say no to the kids a lot. I say no at work a lot. I say no to events a lot. Before, if I get invited to an event, I have a 10 point checklist before I say yes. Like an actual checklist. Yes. Can you share some of um, those points with me? Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of it will be like, who am I speaking to? Is this the Mabel's Labels audience? Is there a possibility for collaboration? Is there, are they going to bring me into their network that's going to, you know, get their people to learn about Mabel's Labels and and make their lives easier? And so a lot of things around, you know, I don't just go to something for the sake of FOMO, like a bunch of people are going who might not be actually you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in that your network is your net worth, right? So you've got to get the right people in the room. And I also am like, if I'm the smartest person in the room, find a new room. Like I always want to challenge myself um, with the people I, I spend time with because we have to be productive. So um, that is one, the saying no, for sure. I also really challenge people to, you know, we have all these big to-do lists. What's on your do not do list? What are you doing that you shouldn't be doing? Is it time to get a vir- virtual assistant? Is it time to say, you know what, kids, pack your own damn lunches. Is it time to say, you you know what, you're five, you can unstack a dishwasher now because my time is better off, you know, going through some reading with your baby brother or whatever, just the stuff that you can do, do. Um, and then there's nothing wrong with your kids pulling up the slack and productivity, actual tips, like things I do. I eat the frog it's called, which means the thing I want to do least I do first. So maybe that's your workout. Maybe that's replying to that angry customer. Maybe that's writing a chapter in your book. If you're feeling like, oh, I'm just not getting anywhere. Maybe that's getting up at five thirty or six and hammering out 500 words every day, no matter what those words are, but eat the frog. Because if you don't all day, that's going to be living rent free in your brain. Oh, I got to respond to that customer. Oh, that troll. I'm, I should block them. I haven't done it yet. I keep thinking about it. Just do it. Just do it and get her done so that you can leave s- space in your brain to be more productive and get all the other things done. Yes, 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 yes. You're reminding me that I need to do something when we get off the phone. Here. Ah, there <laughs> you like, go. Uh, <laughs> I guess I have to go do that thing yeah, now. Because Julie done. told me to. Told you and to. now I have to, I yes. guess. Good. Listen to mommy. (laughs) Speaking of listening to you, what would you say to a potential entrepreneur who maybe she has an idea in the back of her mind and she says, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. What would you say to her? Oh, oh, so many things. One would be, which I mentioned already, understand what you're getting into and that the lack of glamour involved. The second would be sit down and write down everyone you know who can help. Who do you know? You start picking brains. You start asking people for coffee. You start asking questions. I say to my kids and I say in business, I say to everyone, no's are free. You can ask the question and be told no, and that's okay. So then just start asking and then just start getting yourself out there. Talk to people, turn up at networking events, join groups. And again, don't be afraid to ask. If you're not used to social media, you're not great at it. Find somebody who does something similar. So say you're starting a baby product. Okay, Julie has one of those. Start following Mabel's labels. Start following me. See who I'm interacting with. See who I'm following. Because if I'm following them, they're probably going to be good for your business too. So find somebody who's um, in the same market, but a non-competer and just kind of follow along for a while. And then eventually you might feel comfortable jumping into a conversation, but really that it does go down to your net worth, your net worth, just get, go out there and and put yourself out there because, you know, visibility is credibility, brings loyalty, brings business, all that jazz. All that jazz, jazz Mm. hands. I'm doing my jazz hands right now. Yay, jazz hands. (laughs) Julie, what do you think is the biggest modern mom problem out there right now? Ooh, biggest modern mom problem. I think it probably is managing that mother load. I think it is, um, you know, that that guilt. I think it's this concern about having it all. And I'm going to say this. I gave up mom guilt five kids ago because it is not useful. 
It is not proactive. It doesn't get anything done. So now if I feel like I'm not spending enough time with the kids and I'm spending too much time at work, I sit down and I look at my schedule and I do this. I make change. And other way, if I feel like I need to do more at work and the kids are pulling too much from me, why is that happening? Is there a spouse I can pull in? Is there some help I can pull in with something? Is it necessary that I drive to that? Can I get somebody to do that? So I think the mom guilt thing, when it starts creeping in, it's giving you a message. And when you get that message, make a change and be proactive. Lying in bed, crying because you're a terrible mother isn't going to help anyone. It's not going to make a change. It's not going to bring you sleep at night. So I think letting go of the mom guilt um, is really a huge one. Um, and uh, yeah, getting, yeah, got it. you got to get the help. You got to get the help. And yeah, getting rid of the guilt. Um, I'm trying to think what else I feel like was a real game changer for me. Um, I think really my secret sauce has always been sort of my perspective and my mindset. And I really just don't care what people think. If you came in my house right now and it's messy, fine. I have a messy house. So what? I don't care if you go home and tell your husband I have a messy house. I'm good with it, right? I, I have a home. It's okay. I will tell you, when you're in my house, you'll feel comfortable. You'll feel at ease. You'll enjoy yourself. It's a good vibe. So that's that's the priority for me. I really try not to complain. And I talk about not, like, I'm not saying this in a toxic positivity kind of way. I'm saying this in a, like, Saying I'm tired has never gotten me rest. A bed's never appeared and said, you know, sleep fairies, Julie, you need a nap, go take one. So if I'm tired, what can I do? Like maybe don't bring my phone to bed and scroll. Maybe don't watch Netflix in bed before I fall. Maybe go to bed half an hour earlier. Maybe, anyway, what can I do rather than complaining? Because your kids hear you complain is annoying for them. Uh, it's going to lead to a bunch of whiny kids because this parenting gig is role modeling. You can teach and preach all you want, but this is a role modeling gig. So if you don't want, want whiny kids, don't be a whiny ma. So that's basically what I'd say. It's like, mind your role mo modeling, um, you know, really to try not to complain need needlessly and really just you know, the mom guilt, it's, it's gotta go. It's, it's just, it's, it's not getting, it's not serving you. Yeah, it's not. Absolutely. It's not I, I shed that. Yeah. I love that you said five kids ago. I probably said that maybe five years ago. Good. And I was just like, no. Was this there is something that made you do it? Did you have like a, that TSN or the moment where you're just like, no more? You did. I, you know, I think it was an evolution over time. I think okay. that's what it was. You I just don't got think to that, that it was like one particular thing. I was like, yeah. but like you said, like, this is not healthy. This not is serving not serving me. anyone yeah. Yeah. anymore. And so, no. I think the other I, thing I, too, yeah. yeah. The other thing too, like I really, again, this kind of goes back to the role modeling, but like I'm not actually afraid to make mistakes. And I do make mistakes. And and when I make a mistake with my kids, I'm like, oh man, I think I got that wrong. I'm really sorry. You know what I'm going to do next time? I'm not going to tell that story. I didn't realize you were sensitive to that story. So I'm not going to tell that story in front of Nan. Um, I'm sorry, but thank you for pointing that out to me. And mm -hmm. when you when you apologize and learn, it shows them that it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to apologize. There's no shame in that. And the other thing too, like with having teens now, it means they don't lie to you because they're yeah. not afraid to tell you the truth, right? Yes. Because you, they know that they can learn from it and be sorry and we can all move on. So one of our family, we have family, we have business core values and we have family core values. And one of our family core values is be quick to forgive because we need to move on and we can't hold grudges and we never, ever bring up something else. We fight the fight we're having. We don't have a fight with somebody and bring up that your face is ugly. Like that's not, doesn't have to do with what we're fighting about. So that has no place. So we fight mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we said about the laying the groundwork, but those are the types of things that are laying the groundwork. Right. You really have to pat yeah. yourself on the back, yeah. Julie, for that. You really do. It's the things uh -huh. with the repairing after rupture, they sometimes refer to it as, and, right. and you're doing it. So pat right. yourself on the back because all of those little things yeah. that you may take for granted are making all the difference. And then, you know, you do see like, then they don't end up resenting things. They're just like, because if they're like, well, you did this, you did this. You're like, oh gosh, I did do that. I, I'm really sorry about that. They're like, thanks. And they move on. Again, I'm all about saving the therapy dollars later. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
<laughs> because six kids in therapy would be right? quite expensive. I mean, you should see uh, now with all of them going off to school. Ah, anyway, I could only I gotta sell all the labels. <laughs> all the labels. Everybody, go out and buy Mabel's go buy labels. Mabel's. <laughs> Julie, where can everyone find you? Where could we learn more about Mabel's labels and your For book, sure. which I have here called "Like a Mother"? Awesome. Yeah. Tell us all the so, things. Of course, Mabel's Labels, um, you can go to mabelslabels.com and check us out. And actually, I know on the show notes, I'm going to throw you a coupon code for your people so you can throw awesome. that in the show notes because we want your awesome listeners to have a coupon code for Mabel's Labels. And then to learn about me and you know where I'm at or the book, anything else, uh, it's mabelslabels.com slash Julie Cole. And you speak all over the place. I feel like, like, and I say all over the place, I mean, you're, you're on television, you're at conferences, you're literally yeah, all over the place. Yeah, I gab a lot. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, um, it's again, again, that's something that's come easier as the kids have gotten a little bit older. It used to be very, very difficult to travel with all of them because it involved a lot of humans to take, take the spot of one, one mother. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, this last week when I was in New York and daddy had to go away for work, four or five of them were at home on their own. And hey, I came home and the place was still standing. So there you go. Maybe that's not all the dishes got done, but that's all right. Small that's wins. That's okay. That's what that's plastic. Okay. That's, that's the other thing too. Honestly, Tara, like that is also another thing that I do is I pick the hill I want to die on. Yes. You know, and I yes. think for moms, like when you, you know, if you're nagging your spouse about all of the things, you know, maybe just make, I, I've got one thing. If it doesn't impact their health and safety, I don't comment on it. Yep. That's you know, it. if he dressed them funny, I never said anything. If he didn't wash their faces great, I never said anything. I don't want to be the nagging dragon. And as long as the kids are healthy and happy and safe, that's that's basically my standard. Call it low or call it high. That's it. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Whatever it is, it works. So keep yeah. doing it. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of this incredible advice because like you had wonderful entrepreneurial advice, you had wonderful parenting advice. So thank you, Julie. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Modern Mom Probs. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive in today's problem with me, your host, Tara Clark. Join me next time when I'll be interviewing another great guest, and tackling another modern mom problem. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review and a rating. As always, you could head over to Modern Mom Probs on Instagram and give me a follow or check out my book, Modern Mom Probs, A Survival Guide for 21st Century Mothers, available online wherever books are sold. Well, that's it for today. See you next time, folks. you can start your day off right. When you find a professional on Angie to get your plumbing right first. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Visit Angie.com. You can do this when you Angie that. The living room is where you make life's most beautiful memories. But your sofa shouldn't be the one remembering them. The new life-resistant, high-performance furniture collection from Ashley is designed to withstand all the spills, slip-ups, and muddy paws that come with the best parts of life. Ashley high-performance sofas and recliners are soft, on-trend, and easy to clean. Shop the high-performance furniture in-store or online at ashley.com. Ashley, for the love of home.